morning and welcome to All Saints, whether you are gathered here in the pews or gathered around a screen at home, we are strengthened and enriched by your presence this morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejoiced in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you and killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as you did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 4. We'll read the psalm antiphonally, beginning on this side of the congregation. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Mortals, now long will you... How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart and silent upon your bed. 
Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon me, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will we be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. What will be has not... What we do know is this, what he, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seen a ghost. He said to them, 
Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for ghost does not have flesh and bone, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Then their joy, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They said, they gave him a piece of boiled fish and took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I've spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened his mind to, then he opened their mind to understand the scripture. And he said to them, that is his risen. It is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from death on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in the name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Thank you. We speak together in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sometimes the scriptures are a bit like being in this church or any church for that matter. In this church, I've been here for a long time now, but every once in a while, I will look up or I'll look across or I'll look down or I'll look somewhere and I'll see something that I've never seen before. Teddy knows all about this because when we're running wires or doing things, we're always finding uh, bits of hardware that might have been here for 100 years, 130 years, 10 years. Well, no, 10 years, I know most of that hardware. But we wonder, what was that for? And it gives us a new perspective on something that might have happened. So, you know, you probably see that no matter what church you go into. You've been there a million times, but there's something new to be seen. That was my experience with this gospel from Luke this morning. I've read it once or twice, but this morning I realized that we pretty well covered last week the you're only going to believe me if you see me thing, right? With, with Thomas. But we go a little deeper in Luke. He says to them, touch me and see I'm a, that, that, for a, that, that it's me. I'm not a ghost, obviously. And they was like, well, that's cool if it's true. And, you know, he's thinking, oh, for my sake. Uh, have you got anything to eat? And they give him a piece of broiled fish. They fed Jesus. And what did that do? Come on. What did it do? Quick Bible study. Think about it. Well, he said, they gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. And then they said to him, these are my words that I spoke to you. And then they believed him, right? After he, after he had eaten. Because do ghosts eat? No. You get that gross scene in Casper, if, uh, in the, movie, the Casper movie, if you do that. It is Jesus saying, look, it's really, really me. What's it going to take for us to recognize, for you guys to recognize me? Well, in this little chunk of Luke, it occurs to me that what it took was for them 
to feed Jesus. We're used to Jesus feeding the disciples, right? I mean, even after the resurrection, he makes uh, in their accounts of him cooking breakfast on the beach for them. Uh, every Sunday, we offer, you know, this is my body, this is my blood given for you. We're used to being fed. But what happens when it gets turned around? What it occurred to me is that when it was when, not so much when the disciples saw him, but it was when they fed him, when they gave to him that they pretty well thought was him, but maybe it wasn't him. But when they gave it, something happened to them. Then they understood. Then they saw Jesus for who Jesus is. Then were their hearts glad. Then was he known to them in the breaking of bread. Well, so what? So it's 2,000 years later. What happens when we feed Jesus? What happens when we feed our neighbor, whether physically, whether through the blessing box, whether it's giving somebody, you know, a dollar on the street, whether it's being kind, whether it's literal or figurative giving, I think then we recognize the humanity of that person. Then we recognize the Jesus in that person. I think that when we give, we recognize the truth. So when we feed Jesus, and how do we do that? Jesus said, feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. And Jesus said to Peter a third time, driving Peter to distraction, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Why are you asking again? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. I think, and it's just a, you know, and this is, this is occurring to me really in this reading of the gospel as I was preparing for today, that this really is a way of looking at it where we can know Jesus not just in the breaking of the bread, at the communion table, not just in the breaking of the bread around the table at home, but this, whenever we give back out of love, then I think the person before us, you know, who might be one of those saints of God that we like to sing about, you can meet them at home or at school or at work or in shops or at tea, the saints of God who were just folk like me, I think that's when we find the holy in people. I think that is a way that we are able to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves. When we put it into action, we give God joy. Think about that for a second. Giving God joy. I think when we do these things, I think when we're being the church, individually or corporately, I think then we give God joy. And that's really a wonderful thing to do. Think about that. Think about what it is to give joy. Have you given joy to your, to your friends, to your parents, to anyone? It gives you joy too, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does. And I think you get to know that person better. So, the disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And they knew the Lord Jesus when they fed him. Let us always know him. Let us recognize him. Let us have the joy of giving to him throughout our lives. Amen.
Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Lawrence, Geraldine, William and Daniel, our bishops, Lawrence, our priest, Marjorie, our deacon, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, President of the United States, Kathy, Governor of New York, and all who govern and hold our authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble especially those who are on the All Saints intercession list and all those whose lives are torn by war or gun violence. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, remembering especially all those for whom the Easter lilies were given. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We thank you for the blessings of this life. <coughs> Remember especially the blessings of family and friends for whom the flowers and liturgical gifts are given. May we always recognize your grace in our lives. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Remember Lord, those who are not doing well at this moment and they're sick, so let us remember them in our prayers as much as we can on a daily basis. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, your apostles' peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my dear. Good morning. Good to be with you all this morning. Um, I see we haven't been completely blown to bits. Unfortunately, the uh, new sign that was on, I hate to use the past tense, the 40th Avenue sign, uh, the wind came behind it and knocked it off the building and it got blown down. Um, and unfortunately, it was snapped in half. So we're working on, on figuring out how best to replace that. So um, 
I wasn't going to announce that, but there it is. Uh, the liturgical guest this morning, the sanctuary lamp, is given by Robert and Sharon Earl to the glory of God and loving memory of Robert's mother, Pauline Meeks. Uh, please join us for coffee hour following the service, vestry. Uh, make it a quick stop at coffee hour uh, because we do have a vestry meeting following the service. Um, let's see, come, there's a couple of musical events coming up this week. Uh, on Tuesday evening, the Bayside Men's Glee Club is having its annual Associates Night, and you're invited to uh, join us for a little bit of a backstage view of what happens uh, how the, with the Glee Club. Uh, the, the first part of the evening includes um, a rehear our rehearsal, and then there's a number of uh, people doing um, music and such, so or, uh, following. So. Uh, please join us. That'll be in the common room on Tuesday evening beginning at 7.30. Uh, on Friday evening at 7 is the next Major Tom's Coffee House. You'll see a lot of the same people that, that were on uh, Tuesday will be there on Friday, I'm sure. Um, our next Sunday, we also have a baptism and a special coffee hour. Our good friend Charles Olash is being baptized. Um, next Sunday, and he will, and then we'll have a special coffee hour to celebrate him. Uh, den, uh, the Deanery Pentecost service, it seems to be being a movable feast. It's had to be moved twice now, uh, and that will, the date won't change. That will be May 19th, but the place, stay tuned. It will either be here or at St. John's, uh, so uh, hopefully we'll know um, St. John's, and we are both having vestry meetings today, so I'm sure we'll know by next week. Uh, Vestry, we are again meeting today, um, and I think that's the main event for me. Um, Susan is under the weather today, but uh, I'm hope Diana, are you going to be able to kind of, Diana's going to uh, cover church school this morning, so uh, if you're among the youngsters, please find Miss Diana, and she will lead you through the uh, events. Um, and I think that is it. What have I missed? Oh, I know. Uh, in two weeks, we'll be celebrating our altar guild. So if you are altar guild, please plan to be here uh, for uh, our special celebration and recognition of our altar guild. It's been a long time since we've done a proper recognition. And without them, um, it would be, Sunday mornings would be very, very different, let's just say. Uh, so thank you all for what you do, and we'll do some celebrating of you soon. Um, what have I missed? I guess that's it. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. We invite all those joining us remotely today to join in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you physically, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously Lord. accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Morning. How are you all feeling today? I can hardly hear you. <laughs> it's good to see so many of you here this morning. How was your week? Good. So that meant you stayed in. <laughs> That's it. True All Saints, Trojans, they'll come out and do what they need to do. Yeah. It's always a gift when I come here and look at all of you and see your wonderful faces and knowing that there's a joy coming from you. So God bless you. So go in peace, spread the word, and love your neighbors as yourselves. God bless. Amen. 